this song, I pray that the river of the Lord will wet us once more, that we may not be dry. Sing it, church, down the mountain. Down the mountain, the river flows. It's refreshing wherever it goes. Through the valleys and over the fields, the river is rushing the river. Can we sing it again? Down the mountain, the river Can you pick it up from the river of God? The river of God, it gives us life. The river of God keeps us wet in the Holy Ghost that we may be sensitive to the world 
for he who is in you is greater than in this the one who is in this world that you will not be attacked by sin but you will attack sin and sin nature and crucify so that the river of god will keep flowing through our life and this is my desire to serve you lord to honor you to love you to pray to you to seek your face make this your commitment this morning we have come to the end of this year and it's my desire lord to honor you in my words in my action in my thought in my doing in my relationships i want to honor you desire to honor you how do we honor the lord by following the word of god following his footsteps obey what he has written and given us peter says command me to walk into this water lord it's not natural to walk on the water Today the Lord has commanded us to do certain things. In our rational mind, those commands cannot be obeyed. You may sing, you may get engrossed in this world, but when you obey and follow the command, you will walk over all your problems. You can walk over your sin. You can walk over your sickness. You can walk over all the ailment you can walk can you make a decision this morning no matter what lord this water can pull me in can drown me initially it may be joyful but eventually i'll die because i'm drowned but in the same water if i follow the command of the lord jesus christ i can walk over it sin is in the same manner you can die in your sins you can get emerged in your sins you can get drowned eventually you'll die but when you look upon Jesus and when you follow Jesus that sin will not affect you you will walk over it you will not be affected 
because you're focusing on Jesus, fixing your eyes on Jesus and obeying the command of Jesus. That's what He decides of you this morning. Can you make this decision, Lord? In this world that I'm living in, which is so cruel, it's so deep. If I sink, I go to the bottom. And there is no help once I drown. But now I want to follow your footsteps. I want to obey your command. If you make this decision, just lift your hand and tell him, Lord, I want to honor you, Lord. I want to honor you by walking over all the things that can give me pleasure and not get engrossed in those things but fix my eyes on Jesus. This is my desire to honor you. This is my desire to honor you, Lord. To honor With all my heart, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. I worship you. All I have within me, I just want to give you praise. I give you. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me.
we read a portion from the Old Testament where Joshua, the leader, after Moses, is speaking to the Israelites, to the ones who have been delivered by the Lord to serve God. For about 40 years, they have seen God doing great things in their life. For about 40 years, they have witnessed the great power of God. Yet, they were not able to circumcise their hearts and get rid of the filth of this world and get rid of all the idols that their previous generation started to take on in the strange land. Keeping all those idols, they were trying to serve the Lord. Serve the Lord in their services. Serve the Lord in all the ordinances. Serve the Lord. That means they were volunteering themselves to do things as service unto the Lord. They volunteered to be in the temple. They volunteered to be around the tabernacle. They volunteered to do every service that the priest was asking them to do. They served in blowing the trumpets. They served in the choir. They served in the other area of cleansing. They even served in helping the sacrifices. They served in all area. But still their heart was contaminated. Their heart was not right before the Lord. Their heart was not clean before the Lord. But yet they performed the duties, their rights. In their protocol, they were right, but in their heart, they were wrong. Many of us do things because it's our protocol. Is our heart right? That's what the Lord is calling us to check this morning. Joshua, the anointed man of God, he calls his people to summon. He calls his people to gather around. And then he says, choose ye this day whom you are going to serve. The way you are serving now is not right. It's not acceptable before Yahweh, the Lord our God. He is a jealous God. He is a God who wants you to give full attention to him. Whereas you are not able to give your total attention to him. You're lukewarm. He's going to vomit you. He's going to throw you out. You're neither cold. You're neither warm. You're in between. Every day you try to come during the, the service hours and do things. But when you go out, you're not the same. You're different. You're following other idols. You're following other gods. You're following other ways. Your ways are totally different, contrary to what the Lord has given us through Moses. He's calling them to have a lifestyle that is clean before the Lord all through. So that the Lord can anoint them and the Lord can bless them and the Lord can refresh them and the Lord can use them. That the nations will be seeing the glory of God. That's what the calling is for. Not just to come every Sunday and praise him and go. The Lord has called us that we may be a witness for him all through so that we can see the goodness of the Lord in our life. And the people can see the greatness of the Lord in our life. And they will glorify the Lord and magnify the Lord because of your holiness in him. As I'm traveling around the world, I see God moving things around in such a way that the people around the world are fearing the Lord and they're coming and they're saying, forgive us, Lord, for we are seeing that your kingdom is coming down. When you travel around, you'll be able to understand how quick the Lord is coming. We are in the last days. We are so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Lord, he himself is going to come from heaven. The scripture says that he's going to blow the horn. He's going to blow the trumpet. 
the angels, the archangels are going to scream, are going to shout with the shout of, a, of the archangel and the Lord blowing the trumpet and the angels joining him. The Lord is going to descend from heaven and we, the ones who have died in Christ are going to hear the trumpet call and they're going to rise up and we who are alive are going to be caught up. We are very close to that day and the Lord is calling us, choose ye this day whom you are going to serve. Choose ye this day whom you are going to serve. There's a choice. When you go through the English alphabet, A, B, C, D, B and C, it's birth and death. It's so easy to understand this uh, analogy in English. Between B and D, there is always a C, which is choice. Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27. We read that we are born and then we die, then face judgment. What is the judgment we are going to face? Every man has to die and then face judgment. The judgment that we are going to face is based on the choices that we have made between our birth and death. So what is it you are going to do about the choices that you have? The Lord doesn't choose for you, but he gives you an opportunity to choose. The parents give you opportunities. The church gives you opportunities. The, the, the schools, the colleges gives you opportunities. And it is your decision to choose and to excel. Our God has called us to excel. Just choose. Just choice is not enough. When we choose certain things, we got to excel in that area. We've got to be steadfast. We've got to be matured. We've got to grow. We've got to grow to the point that when others see us, they will look at us as a person who's esteemed, who's high, because the Lord is with him in his decision that he has made. They can be right choices. They can be wrong choices. Right choices will enable us to lift our heads up and walk straight. Wrong choices will call us to put our heads down and be in shame. Adam and Eve in that Garden of Eden, they had a choice. And the choice that they made was to disobey God. And when they disobeyed God, every day when God came, they ran before God. They wanted to stand before God. They wanted to honor God. They wanted to be with Him. They wanted to have fellowship with Him. But that one particular day when they made a wrong choice, they ran away from God. They hid from God. But what is the decision that we are making? Am I willing to deny myself? Am I willing to give up everything that I long for, which is displeasing God, and take up the cross and follow Him? When you deny yourself, He's calling us to deny the things that will displease God. Those are the things we got to deny. Some of us deny certain things which doesn't bother God. Just our outward appearances. Not that. He's calling us for the inward appearance to be clean before the Lord. It's not just our dress code. It's not just the color that we wear. Many of us try to Change the outward things, appearances. But the Lord is calling us. Joshua is speaking to his people. You've got to choose this day. Outward, everything is good. Everything that you're doing appears to be good. But there is some foreign God inside you. There is some foreign nature inside you, which is displeasing God, which is contradicting the law of the Lord. What is it that's contradicting the law of God in our life? That's not allowing us to get close to God. We serve God, but we are not in Him. We serve God, but we are not close to Him. We serve God, we do not have a relationship with Him. The Lord is calling us to make the right choice. Choose He this day whom you are going to serve. And the people unanimously decided to serve the Lord. They say, we will serve the Lord. And again, Joshua is saying, your decision to serve the Lord is good, but it's not easy. 
To serve the Lord, you've got to deny certain things. To serve the Lord, you've got to let go of certain things. To serve the Lord, you've got to crucify yourself. To serve the Lord, you've got to deny yourself. You've got to come to a point that you're willing to even die for Him. That's when you can really serve the Lord. Some of us cannot take even one small criticism. We cannot take correction. We cannot take certain things. We want our way to happen. Whom are you going to serve? And Joshua, he says, me and my household, we have chosen to serve the Lord. We have chosen to serve the Lord. And the people come. And they say we have also chosen to serve the Lord. In these last days. If your choice is to serve the Lord. You are going to see great heights. You are going to cross over. You are going to be the head and not the tail. You are going to increase. And you will see the blessings of the Lord in your life. You will not be borrowing. You will be giving. That's how the Lord will bless you. Sickness will be out of your life. He will cancel all debts. The Lord, when you honor the Lord, He will honor you. The scripture says, when you serve the Lord, the Father honors you. He will honor you. When we serve the Lord, sometimes the people may not honor you may have gone through those situations. I have gone through those situations. People who were very close. There were times that they disowned. But the scripture says the father will honor. When the father honors, there's an elevation. When the father honors, there's a height that we go to. When the father honors, he will show to the people that he is with you. That he has never forsaken you. They may wonder what is going on. Serving the Lord. Joshua is facing a big challenge. He's about to leave this world. He's about to close his eyes. But before that he wanted to make sure that his followers, his people serve the Lord. This year is not yet over. This year is going to close its eyes. Another two months, we are going to be saying 2017. In another two months, we are going to be saying everything is 17. And then it's going to be 2018. This year is going to pass by. We made many decisions. Many resolutions. But today, where do you stand? Where do you stand today? Were you able to fulfill all that you promised the Lord? Were you able to follow the Lord the way He wanted you to follow Him, not the way that we wanted? We, are, we wanted it in a convenient manner. We are just opportunists. We want to seize an opportunity. And forget the ones who gave you that opportunity. That's the world we are living in. Therefore, the end result is not blessed. Why some of us are suffering? Because we are not able to understand the principles of the Lord. We think everything is glorious. It can be glorious for a while. Some of the halogen lamps, even after plugging the plug out, it will keep burning for a while. The cord in the lamp, even after the oil is removed, oil is drained, it will keep burning. Some of us are burning in that manner. That means that coil is burning. The oil is not burning. The coil is burning, which means it's going to go soon, diminish and vanish. Many of us, we are burning. 
But is the oil of the Holy Spirit from us is burning or we are burning our flesh out. Question yourself. You may be shining. What is that shine in you? If we do not have the river of God flowing down in our life, we will start burning and we will burn ourselves out soon. But when we let the Holy Spirit burn in us and through us and out of us, we will be hidden in Him. We will live and we will not die. Because the Lord Jesus has promised us. The Lord has promised so many things. This year is not yet over. All the promises that the Lord has given us, evaluate, is it fulfilled in your life? Evaluate if you have fulfilled what you have promised to the Lord. There are so many things that you said that you would do for the Lord this 2017. But where are you today? What have you done today? Where do you stand today? What am I? Who am I? That he's so mindful of me. No matter what I do, he's still caring for me. His grace is sufficient for me. Why is it? How long will the Lord tarry with his grace? In Genesis chapter 6, the Lord is saying, I do not know why I created human beings. I regret. I'm disappointed. That's what he says. Because I created him, I'm giving him grace, but how long will I give him this grace? The Lord was disappointed and he brought a flood to destroy mankind. Grace is not going to continue long in our life. And still they disobeyed. They wanted to be a, build a big tower. They wanted to build a kingdom within the kingdom. They want to build a church within the church. Bring a group of people against Noah, against his leadership, and joined hand and started to build. The Lord was against that purpose. He let them do it. And the Lord brought confusion there. Today, many of us are confused because we are not able to understand the plan of God, the goodness of the Lord. Lives are confused. We do not know if we are in the right place. Is this family is right for me? We have no choice to choose in which family we are going to be born. But after we are born, we have choices that we can make. How we can grow, how we can build, whom to choose to be my spouse. We have a choice. And those choices, if it's right and if it's perfect will of God. And if you accept those choices, you're going to grow and you're going to be happy. Many of us are confused in life. We do not know. After joining a job, is this what God wants me to have? We are confused. After marrying, we do not know. Is this the one the Lord really wants? It's all after effects. But the Lord says, seek me and I will guide you. And in your choices, I will help you. And I will fulfill everything that I promised you. Therefore, we've got to start moving forward. We've got to move towards the commitment that we made. How we are going to serve the Lord. The Lord is serious about the commitments that we make. He doesn't take it light. When, he, when we say something... He holds on to it. When we say, I commit towards this mission, this offering every month, he doesn't take it easy. He counts that. And when we fail him, he's hurt. When we commit that we will serve the Lord and we will serve the sanctuary of the Lord, when we have made a commitment that we will do certain things in the house of the Lord, he takes it serious. And when we give up, he is hurt. What is your commitment? Have we hurt the Lord? Some of us don't care if the Lord is hurt. 
We don't bother if the Lord is hurt. It's okay. But if you have that attitude, there is no repentance. And where there is no repentance, there is no forgiveness because the Lord has called us to repent and get forgiveness. That he will blot out your sins and make you white as snow and help you. What are you going to choose this morning? After birth, we are into time. And death is coming soon. Let's not think death is too far. Death is very close. We do not know how death will come. Church, we've got to be prepared. Our choices should be right. We've got to be wise in our choices. Time cannot be saved. Time can only be spent. How are you spending your time? Some of us are spending our time just over the phone calls. Some of us are spending time just through our messages. Some of us are spending time just with vain talks. You're just beating around the air. As Paul says. We do not set goals. We do not have visions. We do not have a mission to go and walk towards that goal. We do not write down what the Lord has for us. You have a great potential church. The Lord wants to move you to the great level. He didn't call you just to be in this level all the time. We are called to move on to a greater level. Parents put their children in kindergarten not for them to just stay in that kindergarten all their life. They want to be promoted. They have to be promoted to first grade, second grade, third grade and keep moving forward. The same thing in our spiritual life. The Lord wants us to move forward. In our physical life, we've got to move forward. The Lord has called us and he's given us all the ability, all the aid, all the help that we need to move forward. But we've got to make the choice. What is the choice that you are making this morning? Joshua made the right choice. I will serve the Lord. When we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added into our life. No man can stop the blessing that comes into your life. God wants to bless you. He wants to elevate you. He wants you to have wisdom. He wants to have knowledge. He wants you to have the understanding. The Lord wants to bless you abundantly. He wants you to be a counselor, to counsel to people that they may come to the knowledge of Christ. He wants you to be an advisor to the people around that they will know Christ. He wants you to people, he wants you to be a person to set people free from their bondages of sins and sorrows. He wants you to be a deliverer. You have the potential to grow to that level that you can be a blessing. You can pour out yourself. But if our attitude is not right before the Lord, He cannot use us. What is your choice? Don't waste your time. Don't be lazy. Don't just let go of this time. There is so much you can do. But just because of our tongue, our tongue has power. You could understand. Yesterday when I was talking to my little girl, Michelle, she was saying certain things. I spoke to her and I told her, your tongue has power. Certain things you must not speak. Because it will happen. Your tongue has power. Because of your tongue, certain things have happened in our life. And when you do an evaluation, have I moved forward or have I stayed back? If you evaluate, the end result is whatever it is, it's because of the tongue and because of the words that you pronounced. Your tongue is your judge. We've got to understand. We've got to be very careful with the, cho with the word choice that we have in our mouth. It doesn't allow us to grow because it's carnal. It doesn't allow us to achieve what God has for you. Our tongue is our enemy. We've got to understand that. But we've got to overcome that by the power of the Holy Spirit. That we can move forward. And speak what God wants us to speak. And declare what the Lord wants us to declare. 
and to be what God wants us to be. When we dedicate our tongue unto the Lord, I tell you, things will turn around in our life. Many things that we are experiencing are so bad in our life. Those things will change when you dedicate your tongue unto the Lord. Pastor Henry Pillai spoke about dedicating our eyes, dedicating our ears, and here we have a word, dedicating our tongue. Our every part of the body should be dedicated unto the Lord. Our mind, our brain to be dedicated unto the Lord so that we will not waste our time just loitering in this world. What do we do every day? How do we spend our time every day? Is it meaningful? Is it uplifting to ourselves, to our family? We don't have time for ourselves today. We don't have time for our family today. But we have time for every other thing. Choose. Choose what to do, what not to do. There were days my father would wake me up and he would ask me to write down what I'm going to do every day. Yeah. That particular day, he wants me to write down and show to him what I plan to do. I will write and show to him. But now I'm moving to a point to write every morning what not to do. We've got to start thinking out of the box. You've got to start thinking what not to do so that what you do will be right before the Lord. There are certain things that will come in your mind that you want to do. So you've got to decide whether I'm going to do it or no. And then if you're not going to do it, write that down. And see how things will turn around. You've got to learn to live by the wisdom of God in our life. So that we'll be elevated. We will grow up. We will be the head and not the tail. People will come and ask for advice from you. People will come. And when you speak, you will speak pearls into their life. And they will wonder from where such wisdom comes. It comes from the Lord, the one who is the creator of heaven. He is the Holy Spirit who gives us that life that flows through us. The river of God, when it flows through us, our words brings meaning in people's life and they will be blessed. The choices, choice of words, choice of thought, choice of actions, Choice of deeds. It's very important in our life. What do you choose? Whom do you choose this day? Joshua says, I and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. Whom are you going to serve? If you say, I'm going to serve the Lord, it's just not coming and cleaning the church. It's not just coming and playing music in the church. It's not just coming and attending the service and singing song. It is committing yourself to the Lord and circumcising your heart inside and saying, I am going to make a decision that I am not going to be confined to the world. I'm not going to follow the world's standard. I'm going to be above the standard of this world that I will look upon you and I will listen to your command and I will obey your command that I will not sing in this world, but I will stand in this world. That is the commitment that the Lord is calling for. The Lord is calling us. The same water that Peter could have sunk, he did sink later. But the Lord pulled him up. Today, we are in this world. That world is so deep in sin and deceit that we are sinking. But when we call upon the name of the Lord, as Peter called upon the name of, name of the Lord, when he was sinking, the Lord will give his hand and he will pull you up and he will enable you to stand firm again. Are you sinking? Even when you're sinking, you've got to make a decision. The choice is yours whether you're going to call on the name of the Lord or whether you're going to depend on your own ability to swim and somehow manage and get out. That's not going to help you long. Many of us are just trying to help ourselves by certain justification. And we are unable to. Every justification that we try to make, every justification that Peter tried to make after jumping out of that boat when he was sinking, wouldn't have been the right justification to bring him back up. He realized at one point, though I'm a great swimmer, though I know how to jump into this water and swim and even reach the coast, but now if I sink, I will go to the bottom and I will die. He realized that point and he says, Jesus, help me. And the Lord Jesus helped him. Many of us are not having that humility, that humbleness to call upon Jesus for our help when we are sinking. We try our own ways. 
And we try to justify everything that we have done. But the end result is sinking down. Do you want to sink? Or do you want to stand? The choice is yours. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. You and your household shall be saved. You will not drown, you will stand. And when you are walking on water, people will wonder how you do that. And when they try, they will sing. And they will ask you, how are you able to do it? Don't tell them your own story. Tell them the story of Jesus. I follow Jesus' commandment. That's why I'm able to stand. And when you start showing Jesus to the people and people seeing Jesus, they will also stand and they will all walk on the water. Today, what has happened to the church? We are sinking and we are bringing others and we are trying to get others to sink also. As a church, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a believer of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to stand in this ground. We got to stand in this world. And people should look at you and then when they ask your testimony, tell them I was sinking once but I'm able to stand today because I put my trust in the Lord. I put my hope in the Lord. I call upon the Lord, made a decision that no turning back, no matter what, I'm not going to turn back. I am going to stand firm. I made that decision and therefore I'm able to stand in the same ground that I was sinking once. How are you able to overcome that sin now? I call upon the name of the Lord and he's given me strength to overcome that sin. Can I overcome? Yes, you can. Call upon the name of the Lord. What is your decision, church, today? Do you want to indulge in this world, in the luxury of sin and drown and end your life to face judgment sorrowfully, sadly, embarrassment? Got to put your head down. Or do you want to trust Jesus who can lift you up and give you a life, a life more abundant, more pleasing, that the end result is you will stand beside the Lord and he will say, walk ye into my father's home and take hold of your inheritance. What is your decision? It's in your hand. Shall we bow down? Shall we look unto the Lord? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful service. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to choose Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I pray for the ones who have made their decision to serve you, Lord. Serve you from the inside out, not from the outside in. There are many in this world to serve you from outside in, but few to serve you from inside heart, that we may worship you. I pray for the ones who want to be baptized, receiving Jesus as their Savior. Help them, Lord. I pray for the ones who want to receive the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Fill them with your Spirit. Fill this church as we move into November and then into December and then into 2018. I pray that our decisions will be right before you, that you will be glorified, you will be lifted up, that we may keep our heads up and walk upright, that our heads will not be put down, we'll walk right before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each of us forevermore. Amen.